What do you say? I don't know what to tell you. I have email that shows um, that we reached out to him. Um, we can't go directly to the family as we did before. As you're aware, we reached out to the, the brother of Heyman Lee before. We spoke directly with him. We provided and asked him for, you know, if he needed counseling services. We gave and provided a cell phone um, numbers, detective information. We gave him a copy of the motion before we filed it. We even arranged for him to appear by Zoom because the case was set in by the courts at such a, a quick, it, it quickly. But if you knew on Friday, why didn't you let the family know on Friday? Because it had to be then? set in. It had to be set in. We didn't know whether or not we had the ability. You have to get the approval of the court to be able to set it in for dismissal. So as soon as that was done, that's when we gave the call to, to the Heyman Lee family. Well, what do you family. say about the whole process with the Lee family? They, they think they've been left out of this process. I think it's unfortunate that, you know, you have certain attorneys that try to exploit families. And so I think that's what's happening in this case. I have evidence and proof that we reached out to the family. We've done that on every occasion. And we have to go through that attorney as opposed to speaking with that family directly. I guess just along those lines, why <laughs> Mr. Syed was set to be in court next week, why not wait to hear back from the attorney and then enter the null process at that time? Justice delayed is justice denied. He was already, he was already out. He's on home detention. detention. We know that his DNA evidence is, is not a part of this case. It's exculpatory. Why would I wait just so that I could appease someone who doesn't appear to be, and I'm not talking about the family, but the attorney in the case doesn't appear to be appeased? Is Mr. Sayed ineligible for some kind of compensation for wrongful conviction and incarceration? After he goes through the certification process and he is deemed actually innocent. And that's something that has to start and is initiated by the the public defenders and the defense attorneys. So he was not a homicide prosecutor for this case? Yes, we did. Do you know who that is? Off the top. Oh, uh, it's Michael Dunty. He's the chief of our homicide division. Can your office have characterized the Brady violation in this case as the misconduct by prosecutors who handled it previously? Have you referred this to bar counsel for a disciplinary action against the lawyers or anything like that? No, I have not. Why? That's not my, my duty, my responsibility. My, my primary obligation is to find the perpetrators of, of, the, of the person who killed Heyman Lee. That's my, my priority. I think the questions that you guys have been asking me, you should be asking the individuals that sat on the exculpatory evidence for all these years. You've been in the spotlight for a number of things. Mm -hmm. Would you consider this a legacy case for you because of the new unit that you uh, put in place here? So I'm not in this work for legacy. Um, I can just tell you that we have the only sentencing, one of the only sentencing review units in the country where we review and modify the sentences of juvenile lifers in the elderly prison population. We've been able to um, modify and release over 40 individuals, none of whom have recidivated. I started the first conviction integrity unit in the entire state of Maryland where we do reinvestigations into claims of actual innocence. Mr. Saeed is the 13th individual that we have um, actually exonerated and so and or intend to exonerate and so you know I, it's not about legacy it's about righteousness it's about justice it's about making America live up to its ideals of justice and equality and freedom for everybody okay. previous DNA testing was inconclusive what specifically about this result kind of made the office go from just saying the it couldn't stand by the integrity of the conviction versus moving to the, the, as I stated in my, my, my remarks, the items that we tested had never before been tested. And we used advanced DNA to determine that it was not Adnan Saeed. We got DNA this time. The first round of testing, DNA testing, we didn't have enough of the sampling and it was inconclusive because we didn't have enough of the sampling to make any sort of determination, definitive determination as to who that was does or who the, it wasn't. Does the mixture come back to any of the alternatives? I can't tell you that at this time. Is there any concern that the investigation into this, this case is going to stall out under this new administration? I can't answer what will happen with the new administration. I can do what one can more you question. say uh, to people um, who feel like I can say it, who have cases that you know, they feel they were wrongfully convicted uh, moving forward about their cases? What do you say? I can say what I've always said, justice is always worth the price paid for its pursuit. And, you know, hopefully, um, you know, 
other prosecutors in the country model what we've been able to do successfully in Baltimore City for the past seven years. Can I just ask, I think I'm a little confused about maybe it's a semantic thing or maybe it's a procedural thing. Mm -hmm. Are you saying today that this office is exonerating him, that he is innocent? I know that you're not using those words. But what I said is that he's been wrongfully convicted. Right? And until they go through the certification process and they actually, and I have the, um, I think I have the actual thing. No, I don't. I don't have the, the detail or the, uh, the law, but I will give it to you. I can give it to you in the future. But so who, when you say they, like who it's, it's, it has to be initiated by the, d the defense counsel. And, and, and then we, it's, it's petitioning to, for his actual innocence. Petitioning the court? Or Yes. In this court, circuit court. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And your office will agree to that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, if you uh, are just joining us, that was, of course, City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby uh, talking about the shocking update that we all woke up to this morning. Those of you who uh, have the CBS News app heard it right away that Adnan Syed has been found not guilty. To quote the City State's Attorney, this case is over. There are no more appeals necessary. The case against him has dis been dismissed all charges against Adnan Syed dropped. This morning, the criminal case dismissed. Then she went on to explain why, what was new, what happened since the time that we, he was removed from prison, put on home detention, and today to, make, to get us to this point. And very simply, there was something called touch DNA that didn't exist when he was originally arrested. It, only, it was invented in 2003, that's how new it is. Touch DNA actually looks for skin cells on various items of clothing, in this case, clothing, that they found on the body of Heyman Lee. They tested her shirt, her pantyhose, and her shoes for this DNA. And they found it in the skin cells that were left behind all this time later, that were left behind uh, on items of her clothing. Nowhere did they find Adnan Syed's DNA. That officially said he had nothing to do with her murder, and that is why this case is dismissed. Um, she would not elaborate. This is still an open case, which implies that they did find DNA, perhaps belonging to other individuals, whether it's those two people that were originally talked about as being other suspects, one who was a former boyfriend, one who had threatened her, um, that she would not elaborate on. She simply said, this is still an open case. However, the case against Adnan Syed, it is dismissed, it is over. When asked whether he is now off home detention, she said she would assume so. We assume that he is now an entirely free man. She also talked about uh, reaching out to Heyman Lee's family before making the public announcement today. She reached out through email to their attorney because this is the uh, route she's been told to take. She has not heard back. But she did reach out to let them know that this was going to happen, that the case was dismissed and why, and she has not heard back again. Um, the, uh, Ms. Mosby went on to say that her heart goes out uh, to the pain and the trauma that has been suffered by both families. 23 years of pain and trauma, suffering by the family of Heyman Lee and now by the family of Adnan Syed, who have always claimed his innocence. For more than half his life, they have said he is an innocent man. And he himself refused to take a plea deal because he insisted the whole time that he was innocent. Um, she made clear that her administration was not responsible for his original arrest, nor um, did she say that they, she was going to go after the attorneys who were responsible. She said that is not her job. Her job in this case is to pursue justice. Um, and to quote the attorney, city state attorney, today, justice is done. That is her quote. Today, justice is done. When asked why she didn't wait, to announce this until next week when Adnan Syed was due back in court, she said, and it's a quote we've heard before, justice delayed is justice denied, which is why the minute she got the result from this DNA test, she released him and said the case was dismissed. Um, she did say and say 
that this is an open case, that they are going to continue to pursue whomever did indeed kill Heyman Lee. Because that person or persons, they're still out there somewhere, and now they have new evidence that they can pursue in that case. Um, when asked about any sort of monetary compensation for all the years that he spent in prison as an innocent man, Adnan Syed, she has something about a, a little legal education for those reporters who were asking it. Apparently what has to happen is that defense counsel for Adnan Syed have to petition the court to get his innocence certified. Once that certification process has taken place, then at that point they can pursue some monetary um, compensation for 23 years behind bars for a crime that he did not commit. Um, the city state's attorney Mosby also made a point of crediting her sentencing review office. She said it is one of the few in the country. And she said because of this sentencing review office that literally looks at sentences that may have been um, uh, misjudged, involved misjudgment, they have um, exonerated or are ready to exonerate 13 different people who were behind bars for crimes that they did not commit. And once the evidence was re-examined, they found proof that they were innocent uh, for these crimes that they were serving time for. So once again, a huge development in the case of Adnan Syed that we have been following for two decades now. It basically, the case against Adnan Syed, it's over. It's dismissed. He is innocent. There are no appeals needed or necessary. He can now walk free as a f cleared man, never was guilty, and is not guilty at this time. But somewhere out there is someone or someones who did kill Heyman Lee. Her family, I'm sure, are very anxious to have that person be brought to court. And um, that is why this is considered an open and pending case. And they're going to use this new touch DNA, I would imagine, to work with police officers, with homicide detectives, and now go after whoever did kill this young woman 23 years ago. So this is Denise Koch. I'm reporting from CBS News Baltimore. Uh, clearly, we will have full coverage of all of these developments this afternoon at 4, 5, 6, and 7 on uh, WJZ. And we hope you'll join us then. Our reporters are working on those stories right now, and I can promise you full and detailed coverage. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Starting Monday, WJZ and the Baltimore Banner are teaming up. More local stories that matter. More stories that affect 